Excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege to be with you again this year for the annual International Forum on Acceptance uh, of Foreign Nationals and uh, their uh, integration into Japan. I'm honored that uh, IOM has been able to co-host this forum with the Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs since 2005 to help cultivate understanding, acceptance and integration of migrants in Japan. I would uh, like uh, to thank Mr. Kenji Yamada, the State Minister for Foreign Affairs, for the opportunity to deliver a keynote speech today. This forum is very timely, as uh, many developed countries are entering uh, a period of uh, social economic recovery following the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, and migration will play a critical role in all this process. Although the global economy is uh, gradually rebounding, both developed and developing countries are struggling to achieve uh, pre-pandemic growth levels. Declining uh, labor force participation rates are one of many reasons for this uh, slower than expected growth, particularly in uh, aging economies in the north that faced uh, structural labor shortages in key sectors even before the pandemic attracting and retaining ta talented foreign workers is likely to become a, a growing policy priority for many developed economies as they seek to promote uh, faster and uh, more sustainable social economic recovery. Against uh, this uh, background, I wish to commend the government uh, of Japan for the continuing to host the International Forum on Acceptance and uh, Integration. Effective integration, indeed, and uh, those systems are important not only for building inclusive and resilient societies, but also for uh, sustaining support for migration policies and programs that uh, attract and admit newcomers. Failing to facilitate the effective inclusion of newcomers early in the migration process risks exposing them to precarious situations that can lead to more entrenched social exclusion. It also affects the degree to which receiving societies continue to endorse and support those migration policies and embrace the social changes brought about by the arrival of uh, newcomers. Migrants know that moving to a new country with uh, better opportunities means also that they can build a positive future. Yet, it's also a challenging and complex process. Migrants may find it difficult to adjust to a new social cultural environment and to achieve their original goals. And they may become frustrated and alienated from uh, their new community. For IOM, therefore, the integration process uh, must begin before newcomers arrive, when they are planning their move. Setting realistic uh, expectations from the outset and building migrant skills to navigate their new environment is indeed a critical component of IOM's pre- and post-arrival orientation programs. Over the past 21 years, these programs have provided training, 
to more than a million refugees and migrants. Although COVID-19 related travel restrictions led to a decline in the number of beneficiaries, in 2021 alone, IOM conducted training in 93 countries, benefiting nearly 49,000 migrants and refugees of 69 different nationalities. A key lesson from these programs is that early pre and post arrival measures and services to support early integration are effective in increasing a sense of agency among migrants and in reducing anxiety and frustration during the arrival and the settlement process. Recognizing the agency of newcomers early in the integration process is also key to unlocking their social and economic potential. Better informed migrants with an enhanced capacity to navigate services and their social cultural environment upon arrival are also more likely to access the services they effectively need. Services for recent arrivals may be under or oversubscribed due to a lack of appropriate information about the availability and accessibility of such services rather than actual demand. Pre- and post-arrival orientation and counselling can therefore also contribute to a more cost-effective and efficient planning and use of public resources. IOM's long-standing experience in this area has also shown that dispensing information and facts is not sufficient for orientation programs to be effective. Educational psychologist William Glazer notes that we remember 10% of what we read and 20% of what we hear but 75% of what we discuss with others and 95% of what we teach to someone else. OM's group-based orientation programs, therefore, aim to empower the participants through meaningful and experiential learning opportunities based on inclusive, learner-centered, and uh, participatory training methodologies. COVID-19 restrictions on in-person delivery tested indeed IOM's interactive approach uh, to delivering uh, orientation programs. And in 2021, 31% of IOM orientation training was uh, indeed conducting remotely a 9% increase from 2020. Although virtual delivery may have improved outreach to geographically dispersed learners, one must recognize it was less effective in terms of experiential learning than in-person delivery. In addition, learners with limited access to digital services and low levels of literacy, notably women and the elderly, were excluded from participation. Within the framework of IOM's Joint Global Initiative on Diversity, Inclusion and Social Cohesion, we are continuing to explore ways to innovate service delivery through leveraging technology including broader digitalization of integration services while promoting the inclusion of the most vulnerable. In line with Objective 16 
of the global compact for migration, IOM believes that the holistic approach to integration requires the empowerment of migrants and societies to realize full inclusion and social cohesion. Early integration measures and services should therefore prepare both newcomers and the communities in which they settle and include interventions to foster contactness between newcomers and the receiving communities from the pre-arrival phase. For example, IOM uh, conducts uh, employer orientation courses and sensitization programs for host communities to address misconceptions about migration and specific groups of migrants and to remove some of the anxieties about newcomers. A comprehensive orientation and counseling system that includes receiving communities can give all parties of uh, ownership over the settlement and integration process and improve its chances of success. I will conclude uh, by reiterating that the IOM is very honored to continue its long-standing partnership with the government of Japan in providing uh, technical cooperation related uh, to migration management based on our respective knowledge and experience of many years. We also deeply welcome and appreciate Japan's ongoing efforts since 2010 to provide the resettling refugees with comprehensive uh, pre-departure orientation, including cultural orientation and uh, language training with IOM assistance. These efforts have helped to strengthen migration management in Japan by uh, improving integration opportunities for both uh, refugees and host communities. The COVID-19 pandemic has highlighted and confirmed a critical need for multi-sectoral, multilateral coordination and cooperation. IOM remains committed to the principle that uh, humane and orderly migration benefits migrants and society and I reconfirm our full support for the government and people of Japan in its continued work to ensure diversity, inclusion and social cohesion. This will benefit migrants themselves, host communities in Japan and the broader health of the country. Thank you very much.